What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're going to be talking about a weapon light. We're going to be talking about the Olight Odin. Before we do that, I want to mention my patron supporters. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate all your help, and because of that, we do lots of cool things over on the patron page. If you want to go check it out, all you got to do is go down to the description, click that link, and join up. I also want to mention this light is on sale, and if you want to use the link in the description below for that, what this is, is think of it like uh, Olight's version of a scout light, kind of from Surefire. Similar dimensions, uh, it's a little bit more powerful, 2,000 lumens and 22,000 candela, which gives it an extremely impressive throw. Did uh, shoot out to 150 yards with no issue whatsoever, and we could identify poles and whatnot at two to 300 meters, so we'll get Get into the actual use of the light as you can see here it's mounted on my rifle and this is one of the rifles that I tested it on I actually tested this light for product testing for Olight so I've actually had this this one here for quite a while and you can tell as well <laughs> uh, this is the one that went through all the drop testing and it went through all of the uh, rifle fire I shot it next to this comp I even moved it up a little bit to see if the concussion would break it no problems there uh, I shot it next to a suppressor for 500 or so rounds to see if the heat would uh, melt the side of it or anything like that no problems there and I shot it against this I shot it with the stride bog just to throw some extra rounds on it for the review I think this has around 2,000 rounds on it now uh, with no issues at all still runs you can see there and uh, no problems we also did drop tests on this on the concrete we did uh, numerous drop tests and we also did uh, water test as well. We dunked this in water for like five minutes and it works perfectly. Uh, Olights are pretty watertight when it comes to that so overall I would consider it as far as a rifle light very durable which is the first thing I would actually check. Weapon lights like this are either meant to be on a home defense weapon or they're meant to be used by law enforcement or military and they are going to get banged up especially going through doors and stuff. As you can see here this one's come a little bit loose and that's one of the cons of it which we'll get into here in a second. This is another one that we tested, but uh, this didn't go through any of the drop tests or anything like that. And as you can see here, that's the beam pattern. How these work is it has, if you press lightly, you can get a low power. If you press hard, you're gonna get the full power. And if you click it, you can get constant on. So you've got some options there when it comes to using this as like an EDC light. It'll work. You can slide it off just like that. And as you can see here, it uses the same pattern mounts as the Surefire Scout. So if you like a particular mount, uh, use whatever you want. I've been running them on just the regular mount they come with, with the, uh, in, with the uh, Magpul uh, M-Lock uh, canted mount there, because that's the ones I actually like to run my weapon lights with. It puts it at the exact uh, uh, angle that I like running off the vertical grip. So it's very comfortable for me to use that and uh, that's why I'm running it. Also, they're really cheap and I've got a ton of them. So as you can see here, this is the mounting system on the Odin, and you can actually push this in and lock it any which way you like. You can push it in over here and lock it if you want, and then you just press the button and it comes off, so you can run it on top of your pick rail if you want and not even run one of these mounts. Or you can run it on the top like this, and you can run it in just like that, and when you want it to come off, all you do is push it like that and it comes off so it's just got a, a one click type of thing I'm actually running mine the opposite direction on my rifle here and the reason for that is is because the other side won't clear the rail because this is a very small rail this is the v7's ultralight rail and uh, as you can see there if I wanted to take the light off I can still press the button but it's just been right in there for a while so it's gonna stay there
Then you attach it to your pick mount if you want to via the screws right here, uh, which I would suggest using Loctite. Now the thing that came loose during testing, which is why it's got a little shakiness to it, is these tiny little Allen key screws right here. And that's because I didn't Loctite them. Always Loctite your stuff. I can't express that enough. I don't Loctite stuff during testing because I usually have to take it off and mount it to a bunch of different things. But if this were my dedicated light that I was gonna leave on here, not only would I Loctite these screws, I'd Loctite these screws, and then I'd Loctite those screws. Because trust me, if you shoot things enough, especially, you may not think 5.56 has a lot of recoil, but it vibrates all down the rail because there's so much of a shock wave, and it really rattles things loose consistently. I've had front sights fall off, I've had that gas, blocks come off whatever you're gonna do on the front of your rifle make sure that it's Loctite because again no matter how good they are they're gonna rattle loose eventually and after 2,000 rounds if that's the only problem we had it's pretty good now if you want to charge your Olight Odin I think this is pretty slick just like a lot of Oleg products which really uh, I'm a big fan of it has the magnetic uh, magnetic charging system so all you do is pop that on there and then you take this and you can put that in whatever USB port you want, your laptop, your cell phone charger. I use my cell phone charger. I just pop mine out and put this in and I can charge it up real quick without having to buy new batteries, which is one of the reasons why Olight have become so popular. Now, that causes a bit of an issue only though if you're using tape switches. So Olight has redesigned their tape switch, making it a little bit more difficult to take off. So you can mount this to your pick rail and then this goes on the inside of your light like that and you can lock it forward and then you have to pull it back to take it off. I like that it has a locking system, but I do feel that it still isn't as reliable as something I would want because during the testing uh, we did, we were able to pull this off without running that thing. So I really do think it still needs to be a little bit more sturdy personally, but that doesn't matter to me because I don't run tape switches anyway because I get shit caught on them all the time and uh, I've just never really been a big fan of them. But I use my rifles for home defense. I'm not in the jungles of Guam, so you gotta remember that that's what the way my uh, gear is oriented. But overall, I would take the lack of a tail switch to have the uh, recharge capability. Because just having one charger sitting by there that you can charge all your lights for, I'm a big fan of. Now the max runtime on these is eight hours on the low setting, and I think it's something like 24 minutes on the high setting, which is pretty good. And it does have a little bit of a step down to it like all other weapon lights, so if you leave it on for a period of time, it doesn't melt itself into oblivion. Now, because this is a dedicated rifle light, we did test this. That included tons of drop tests, but a bunch of them during the shooting test as well. I would just unload the rifle and literally drop it on the weapon light. And I think that's one of the reasons why the screws came a little bit loose. But again, I can't stress enough, if you Loctite that, it would not be an issue. But that's why you see that it's all beat up here. Rifles are serious business time, so I wanted to make sure it worked well. That's why we did the 2000 round test. On top of that, we did the concrete test. We did the gravel test. I kicked it around on the ground. We dumped it in water. We did everything I possibly could have thought to do aside from dropping it out of a helicopter and I would have if I had a helicopter. Having 2000 lumens, having that ability to reach out at 300 meters and having all of that for a low cost by comparison to a lot of the other weapon lights that it's on par with as far as stats. 
Uh, there's going to be a flash sale for this at 8 p.m. June 21st through the 23rd, and it's lasting 28 hours, and you can get this guy right here for 30% off. So instead of paying 160 bucks for this, you're paying 50 bucks less, something like $110, which I think is a good deal. If you're looking for a dedicated weapon light, I'd probably jump on that. They're also gonna have some other colors as well besides just black. Uh, both of the ones that I used for the testing were black, but they do have a flat dark earth available, and I think that's some sort of limited edition thing, and some of those guys go crazy for the Olight limited edition stuff. So I'm pretty sure they're doing a gun metal gray at some point as well and they're also doing several other bundles and we'll leave that information in the video somewhere overall i think it's a pretty killer light for around 110 dollars as far as price goes price versus features it can't be beat if you like this video please like and subscribe please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle i'll check you later